Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today in War Thunder it is time to have a look at the Swedish Ground Forces Rank 1. The reason why I'm doing this is generally when a new tech tree comes out, I try and do at least some of the early ranks to give you guys an idea before you decide to either purchase, you know, one of the pre-order packs or one of the order packs I suppose for the CBT, or if you grind out the tester stars, if it's worth it or not. So pretty much uh, this video we're going to go over Rank 1, there's going to be another video talking about Rank 2 and also Rank 3 and probably Rank 4 as well. As you can see at the point of recording, not even a week into the update, I've completed and spaded all of rank 1, rank 2 and rank 3. The reason why these three vehicles aren't spaded right now is because yesterday they actually added the APDS round to the STRV M38, the M31 and M40L. I will factor this into my analysis, but also understand it won't make much of a difference, because generally when I am finished spading a vehicle, then I am done with it. Uh, so the fact that it's a rank 4 modification tagged onto the end of rank 4 means that by the time that I pretty much get to this one, I'm already done with the vehicle. It may uh, it may factor into the fact that when I go filters, elevation mechanism into APDS, it might help a little bit, but after playing a machine like the STRV M41 S2, uh, which it did have the APDS before hits, and also the Largo, I also have experience with it. So let's talk about rank 1, we'll go through vehicle by vehicle, and then go from there. So the first bit is the reserves. The STRV M31 and the STRV M38. These are both pretty serviceable reserves. The M38, in my opinion, is better than the M31. The reason for this is because of the actual drive uh, transmission on both vehicles. The M31 acts very much like the BT5 in a way, where it doesn't respond directly to commands as quickly as it needs to, and also its general movement forwards and backwards is not great. The M38, on the other hand, though, is much more responsive when it comes to its transmission, meaning that you can make uh, more maneuvers uh, quickly and therefore uh, you can push around the place. Both of them have pretty much no armor. Both of them have huge weak spots on the front. The M38 has a larger one. This basic area here is where you shoot this thing because you can just take out the turret incredibly easily. Same with the M31, but this at least has four crew members, so if you take out the turret, you know, it still can actually live. The main issue with both of these vehicles, though, is the 37mm, and this is a trend that you're going to see when it comes to a lot of these rank 1 vehicles. This 37mm, the 37mm CAN M38 is present on the M31, M38 and also the M40L and it pushes into rank 2 as well, even going up to 2.7 with the Largo 1. The main issue with this 37mm is even though it has a good fire rate, as you can see on the crew that I have of this, 29 crew overall at 3.9 seconds, uh, it has a decent fire rate, very similar to the American uh, 37mm. The problem is the penetration and the damage that this does. Muzzle velocity overall is fine on the APCB, APBC round, but the penetration means that you aren't always going to penetrate what you're firing at, and when you have machines at rank 1 that you're going to face a lot of the time, uh, when you look at them, the meta ones such as the Panzer 2C, which is just wandering around with its auto cannon, which has more penetration on its 20mm than you do on your 37mm, and it can eat you uh, like butter because you only have 13 to 15 millimeters of armor. When you have a comparable uh, 37mm from the M2A4, which pens nearly 20 millimeters more than your round does. You can see the problems, right, that this machine has. It also has a better reload rate than you from Sweden. You also have from Italy, once again, the auto loaders of stuff like the AB41 being able to fire at a higher rate and more ammo and 64 millimeters worth of pen. So if we look at it compared to all of the decent vehicles at reserve, the gun doesn't stand up. And that's not even talking just about its penetration. So its penetration is suboptimal, right? Which is why they've given all of these machines access to the APDS round, so they have a better round which penetrates. But even after that, the main issue of this round and the main issue of this gun is it doesn't 
actually do any damage either. The fact is, if you shoot many vehicles with this, you will shoot them and you will end up uh, actually just doing no damage to them. You'll either do that, which is you will kill one person in the crew, which is, you know, okay, uh, or you will yellow them all and do absolutely nothing. This basically means that when you get the surprise on an enemy, which you need in this vehicle, because you don't have the penetration required uh, to be able to face a lot of vehicles up front, you also don't have a lot of the armor required to face vehicles up front, you will lose the engagement. That's as simple as that. You can see there once again, this uh, T26 has a zero man crew, and we are once again just yellowing individuals in the actual turret itself. You're killing the gunner and doing nothing else. So you end up in a situation which is similar to when British APDS was in such a horrible spot, if you remember that back in the day, when you would penetrate a turret or you'd penetrate something, you would yellow members of that turret and they wouldn't die and then they would be able to turn, see you and batter you. This is the problem that this 37mm has and it's the same problem it has going up in BR. At least at reserve, you are facing mainly vehicles which don't have high crew skills and don't have a lot of armor, so it's still serviceable at this BR, uh, but that's about it. If I was going to give these reserves a rating uh, compared to all the other reserves in the game, they would be lower than standard. They are worse than the German ones, worse than the American ones, worse than the Soviet ones, you know, the BT series. The British ones, the A13s, uh, I would actually take the A13 over this machine just because of the penetration on the A13s. It can get up to it better. It's better than the Japanese ones, so there you go. The Chinese ones are better than this, the Italian ones are better than this, and of course French uh, being absolutely terrible at reserve uh, obviously the Swedish are better so they're definitely in the lower echelon of reserves uh, compared to other nations which is kind of sad the next vehicle that we have is the PVLVV FM 42 this is the first anti-air machine you get and normally when it comes to your first anti-air uh, most nations their first anti-air is more of a tank destroyer than anything else uh, so you know the flak panzer uh, is pretty much a tank destroyer. If we have a look at other nations like the US, you know, they have stuff uh, such as the M13, which is obviously more of an AA, but it can still kill tanks with its 50s. The Soviets have the Dishka. Obviously, the Gaz is there and uh, the Dishka is there. These are obviously anti-air, but the 72K is a pretty good tank killer. For the uh, for the British, the Mark 6 is there, but the T17E2 can also be a decent tank killer, even after the changes. The Type 9 94 is a pretty good tank killer, and the Swedish one is more of a tank killer than anything else. And the reason is, one of the things that you will see from all of these, right? So look at the gun elevation, 90 degrees. Have a look at the flag panzer, 87 degrees of gun elevation. Then we have the AAs, uh, this one's at 45, and this one is also at 45. Then, if we have a look at the British, you have 75 and also 65. The Japanese sits with the Type 94 at 82, and then obviously, <laughs> lol, China AA. Uh, and then you have the AS-42, which is at 90, and the French one, the PZT, which is also at 45. So, the biggest issue with this Swedish AA is shared by a few other nations such as the Soviets and also the French is the fact that its gun elevation is not good enough to be able to shoot at planes. It is only good enough to really be able to kill tanks because it's really easy as a plane to be able to just get above it. This is the gun elevation that is on this vehicle. That is it, right? It's just enough to actually shoot the uh, test drive aircraft for a little bit, but look, is this even 45 degrees? It doesn't seem like 45 degrees to me. But you can see the inherent issue that this machine has when shooting at aircraft. The fact is that it doesn't raise the gun enough to be able to do it. So you have to pretty much use it as a pseudo tank destroyer. It's a two-man crew with absolutely no armor. So you have to use the surprise, uh, the surprise factor to be able to kill people. Uh, and the other thing as well is uh, it's pretty nippy, which is kind of nice, so you can use it as like a weird pseudo tank destroyer. And, uh, and also the ammunition that you get, you get a decent amount of belts uh, to be able to do something with, so at least there's that. 
uh, you know, you have access to AP and HG and all of that good stuff. But the ammunition amount that you have on this is only 108, which is three clips of ammunition. It would be nice to have a little bit more on this machine, but unfortunately you don't. Uh, it does get access to artillery supports. Uh, which is kind of nice, so you can drop that on enemies, and as you can see, you get an APT shell, and then you get a HE shell. I would just say take the M42, use it as a tank destroyer, you'll be able to penetrate most stuff, and as a tank destroyer it's okay, but you know, you're going to get one shot a lot, or artillery a lot, but as an actual AA, it is completely useless. It is really bad at the AA duty, and also because it's this open-topped area with a two-man crew, all a plane has to do, because you can't even, you know, put the shield up at a decent amount, is just go above you, come down, and you die. So, as an AA, not too good. As a tank destroyer, not too bad. The funnest vehicle at rank 1 is this machine. The FM4344. So the FM4344, it is a donk gun at heart, it has a crazy long reload, and it also has surprising survivability, which I think is the key to why it's being fun. There's a lot of vehicles at rank 1, uh, the Sturmpanzer, for example, uh, which have these big donk guns, and they are pretty fun. They're also pretty fun to up-tier, and this machine uh, kind of joins them with the SGR M38. It can pen 50 millimeters, but the main thing is it has 5.8 kilos of explosive mass, and also, uh, you know, goes 285 meters per second. So obviously you're going to have to get used to firing this thing uh, at uh, enemies, but once you work it out, or once you get on a lot of small maps, which you do at low tier, you know, stuff like Advanced to the Rhine, city maps like that, you can just sit around the corner, wait for somebody to come around, and then bap-bap with them, and uh, have a bit of fun. So why is this machine so fun? Uh, it's not the fact that you can just one-shot people with the Recolis rifle, it's that it's kind of survivable, and uh, also has a nice little machine gun here. The actual Swedish have some home-mounted machine guns, which is really nice, so even if you don't have a top-mounted machine gun or a coaxial, you still get a machine gun, which is lovely. But this machine is deceptively survivable, and it can survive uh, more than one shot the majority of the time. The reason for this is because if you look at its armor, first of all it's 50 millimeters. So think about this. The Swedish reserves, or the Swedish even going up to the Largo, the 2.7, if this thing is angled at all and you only have the standard round, you are going to struggle to pen it. Which is just insane if you are at, uh, you know, if you are at 100 meters away and you've angled the FM, this thing can't pen it. And as I said, there's no point in talking about the AP APBC round with the HE filler. Don't take it. Just take this one. Like, because you need that extra penetration, even though it's just a little bit. And the HE filler doesn't do anything when it comes to killing units. But if you just angle this a little bit, you can actually deflect shots. And also, even if you get shot, there is not really a clean way with a lot of guns at lower tiers, unless you're firing maybe the 45mm from the Soviets, to be able to one-shot this machine. If you shoot it in the turret, or if you shoot it in the where the gun is, let's say, like the casemate area, you will kill maybe one or two crew members. If you shoot it in the hull, you'll kill maybe the engine, and then one or two crew members. And because this thing has a complement of five crew members, that means it's not easy just to one shot. So you normally get a chance with the FM4344 that you don't with other nations because of the fact that it has this 50 millimeters worth of armor, 30 millimeters here, and 50 millimeters on the front. And it is always satisfying being able just to donk people. When it comes to meta vehicles, obviously it's pretty useless. But when it comes to just having a bit of fun, which I think low tier should be about, then you know, it's not bad. That's why, for me, you know, these two vehicles are okay, where these two vehicles are absolutely terrible. The uh, the best vehicle at rank 1 for the, uh, for the um, Swedish is the IKV-72. The reason for this is because it starts a trend of the Swedish uh, tank destroyers that you'll see throughout. I mean, I've, I've run into this trend all the way up to rank 4 with the PVKVM-43. These tank destroyers have a decent amount of speed behind them. This machine has 145 horsepower at 8 tons, so you're actually able to motor about the place at a decent click, which is really, really nice. It means that you can get to positions early, it means that you're able to, you know, use your vehicle effectively. You can see that the actual speed of this machine, even when stock, 
you know, before the engine upgrades, before the transmission and the filter upgrades, it's a pretty fast, nimble vehicle. And so you can reposition the gun when you need to. Uh, the traverse isn't great, but as I said, like let's say you're shooting a target over there, uh, you can traverse the vehicle really quickly because look, it has dual drive. Isn't that lovely? So the actual maneuverability of this vehicle is better than some of the turreted vehicles which are in the uh, tech tree for the uh, Swedish. So that that's the real key factor that makes this fun to play. The other thing as well that I didn't mention about these, these two have horrible turret traverse. 12.5 degrees per second, 12.2 degrees per second. But in reserve, that's normally what happens. Uh, and then with the IKV-72, it only has 5.6 degrees worth of turret rotation, but you just rotate the whole vehicle in order to do it. The only thing that is a little bit slow on it is getting the elevation, you know, up and down. But the key thing, apart from the speed to the IKV-72, the gun depression. It's negative 20. This means that there is many areas of maps that you can take positions on that you wouldn't be able to with any other vehicle in the game. And that's what makes it really interesting. The fact that you, as an individual, are able to sit on mountains, sit on hills, and just do this, and peek really efficiently and effectively against vehicles on maps such as Finland, on maps such as uh, Japan, on any map that has a hill around the place, just uh, shows that you can actually play a different playstyle which isn't around for a lot of vehicles. And that to me is why this thing is fun. It also doesn't suffer from the same issues as a lot of other vehicles we talked about because of the fact, as you can see, 85 millimeters worth of pen, that is, you know, 25 millimeters better than the 37, makes a huge difference to this vehicle. But once again, I wouldn't use the APHE, I would use the APBC or the AP, depending on what you are used to i would say the apbc is the one to go for just because it does a little bit more damage with its general spread so for me this is my favorite vehicle of rank one it's fun to play and you can also run it with a lineup if you want of ikv 72 the fm 4344 and the pvlvv it doesn't get up to it too well because obviously the penetration isn't the best but if you can use it to run about the place and go a bit crazy then of course you know you can have uh, a bit of fun with it also at 1.7 you can throw in the b17b or the b3c these two are pretty good in ground realistic they have uh, nice bomb loads to be able to crucify a targets and also the eight millimeters are really good at uh, killing planes the swedish aviation guns the eight millimeters and also the 13.2s uh, are some of the best in the game right now at just destroying anything in their path and also you can bring a 230 kilo bomb with the b17b uh, so you can just nuke a target on the ground and with the b3c you can you can bring four of them so it is a lot of fun bringing those vehicles the last vehicle in the standard tech tree uh, for rank one is the strv m40l this to me was a disappointing vehicle the reason for it is yes it has good gun depression negative 15 and uh, also it has decent speed behind it which is definitely a really nice thing about a lot of these swedish vehicles they don't need stuff like these mobility upgrades here to be running around the place instead you know they they don't need them at all they can just run around at their leisure. The main issue I find with stuff like the STRV M40L is the fact that its turret traverse is really bad and also the gun once again. The 37mm stock shell, this 59mm, 51-22mm shell is abysmal at dealing with stuff. And you know what happens at 2.0? You realise that people really like playing certain vehicles. One of those vehicles is this. This is an M4A3105. It's a 2.7 American vehicle. You know what they just added to the game for France? The M4A3105. They also added for France the M3A3 Stuart and the Crusader. France also has access to the B1 Turn and the B1 Bis. All of these vehicles are insanely good against the Swedish 37, unless the Swedish 37 has access to APDS. Even the turret ring weak spots for the B1 BIS is hard to hit and hard to kill when it comes to these Swedish vehicles. 
it is just a pain trying to play these vehicles when all you're facing is stuff like 105 Shermans and also B1 Bisses, B1 Turs, which you can't penetrate. So at least with the APDS, as I said, that kind of helps, but then the post-pen damage is still bad with this gun uh, to be able to do anything with it. This crew, this machine also only has three crew. So it has two in the turret and one in the hull. That means if you get penned in the turret, which will happen a lot because this machine has no turret armor, 33, 35 millimeters uh, at most, then they'll just go straight through it and kill these two guys right here. And then you'll just die. So the STRV M40L is not a good vehicle at all when it comes to um, actually playing in a War Thunder. I would actually say it might be one of the worst tour vehicles in the game uh, if we just look across. It's definitely worse than the BIS. The AB-43 at least has scouting. I suppose this uh, this is worse than it, the Semavente, uh, with the very low-powered gun. Obviously, the Chiha Kai is better than it, with its stabilizer. The Hawaii and the Chiha Kai are better than it. The British, like, what do we even have at 2-0? I have no idea. The Crusaders absolutely smash it, because you, sometimes you struggle penning Crusaders. The T-70 might be as bad as it, but it's got better armor. The Panzer 4E is easily better than it. And for the Americans, the M8 is way better than it, because it can literally 50 cal it to death, and the Stuart is definitely better than it as well. So it's just a bad taste to a bad end to a bad rank. Uh, the only redeeming factors of this rank are the Donkey Gun, which is fun, and then the IKV-72, which is at least decent. The STRV M39 is incredibly similar to the M38. There is no real difference between them when it comes to general playstyle and general use. Uh, so enjoy having another vehicle which really doesn't do too much when it comes to its overall use. Uh, it has an extra machine gun, I suppose, when it comes to the turret, and uh, has a slightly modified turret, but it still only has three uh, crew members, so once the turret is penned, you die. I would definitely say try and get past rank 1 as quick as possible. At least rank 2 has some redeeming elements. The only redeeming elements of rank 1 are the IKV-72. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I just want to thank Ambrosius McClellan, B. Young, Blackie, Chris Giltnane, Daniel Stanton, J. Wilt, John Ryman, Martinez, Super Cacti, Trigger Hippie, Eugene Terry, and also Elove Goat and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.